Hello, this is the Painting with Commentary for the Young Brass Dragon. If you missed the episode of Luminous the Brass Dragon, you can catch it in the description below. The link will take you there. I'm GMA Tank, let's get going. So, some Katachan Flesh is the color that I chose to start this with, and as you can see, I'm painting a treasure chest. These treasure chests come from WizKids. They're the deep cuts. These minis have four chests. Two of them are open, two of them are closed. I used one of each for this particular mini. Um, this particular model I was making, as you saw in Luminous' story, or maybe you didn't, he's in a, a desert temple high atop a spire. So it's a temple, but it's also got sand in it. And I wanted there to be some treasure. So these are great little adders to put in there, and you could probably make your own, but these are great miniatures, and they're not too expensive because they're small. And they're kind of fun to paint. You know, paint them brown or whichever color you'd like. Uh, they have some banding that goes all the way around them, and then use some shading on them as well. As you can see here, I'm just painting um, the brown, the catch chin flesh. Um, I'm also going to throw in here, so with this temple, you're going to see... Um, some pillars. So there, I put some pictures in right here. You can see these pillars. Those aren't miniatures. I, ma I made those with Milliput. Um, so I basically just rolled them up and put them on this to help make this look more like a temple. So moving back to this uh, treasure chest here, uh, some dry brushing. So Sylvaneth Bark dry brush application just to take that chestnut down a bit and give it some wear. I actually use two different colors of dry brush, the Sylvaneth Bark and then I also use a, a well a Terminus Stone which is going to come next to give it more of an arid dried out look or so I was hoping for. The fun thing with painting miniatures is you just do. No one's going to judge you. Even if you're judging me that's okay because I'm happy with it and you could be happy with yours. You should never feel ashamed of what you come up with. So whenever you paint anything, it's better than it was before you did it. And that's the whole point of it. So keep painting, my friends. You'll get better the more you do it. So there's the Terminus Stone <clears throat> and some Lead Belcher now. This is the color that I decided to paint all the banding that went around the chest. Um, Lead Belcher is just a, a nice medium gray in the metallic line that Games Workshop has. And there's a lot of banding on this chest, you know, and hinges as well. I put a little bit of null oil on later. So, uh, yeah, get some of that on there. And again, they're just props for the base. Uh, they're props for the base, so they don't need to be perfect. You know, as some of the great YouTube painters out there will say is, um, you know, basing. It's just basing. You don't spend all your time on it. And that's true, except sometimes the basing can be more fun than the actual model as is in some of the case of these dragons that are so monochromatic that uh, I have more fun with the basing than I do the dragons, that's for sure. So as I was saying, I hope you um, don't feel too critical of your paint or don't judge too harshly others, especially mine. We're all learning, and every time we paint something, we get better. And uh, it should just be about the process and the journey, not the end result always. So that lead belcher is going on there now. <clears throat> Excuse me, and... Um, Next up, we'll do some some shading. I believe it's a null oil. So also part of this base I can talk to while this is painted is I made a little painting, and as I told you, those um, those columns. And when I made them, I also put some piles with milliput, um, which I ultimately would cover in glue and then sand, which we'll see later in the video. <clears throat> and I put them on a ceramic tile. And I did that because instead of just the round you know, the tile already has like, this marble look to it. It's glossy. And if you have extra tiles lying around your house and you can get one cut, it's a great idea for a base. So we'll get to that again as it comes up with the, with the video. So Auric Armor Gold for the chest. It's a good idea to start with. It's a beautiful color of paint. It's like true gold. And then Stormhole Silver, I popped individual little coins to make them look silver just to break up instead of just a instead of just a, a solid gold thing. I also put some diamond stickers on and some ruby stickers on. So in the finished product, it looks truly like a treasure chest. And there are the ruby stickers. You can get those from craft stores like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. <clears throat> okay, so that tile was my original plan to use tile. That's a sandstone tile I had. I was going to break it up like that and grout it together using Milliput as the base. 
and I thought that would have looked cool, but I couldn't, you know, I was kind of haphazardly breaking it with a hammer. And then I thought, look, see that marble tile? That looks like porcelain. It's got some marble. It's hard to see in the picture, but in real life, it looks really cool. So I thought instead of using the broken apart with the grout, let's just go with a straight marble looking tile, which is what I did. <clears throat> you can also see I made a little artist a uh, little picture. So there's a little bit of linen and some cardboard cut into strips for an easel. You'll see the finish, finished picture done. It's like painting a little painting. It's fun. And here it is. This is the milliput. Those are the piles. Put some white glue on uh, for the sand. So those are where I wanted sand piles to be. I put the dragon around them. And uh, I already knew I was going to put my columns in the corners. <clears throat> so at this point, I just glue up these piles quite heavily. A little bit of in the middle um, between those two right piles. Right most, I make a little sand bridge so that when the sand goes on there, they'll get dusted. Sand from a desert, that's right. <laughs> just dump it on there, harden away, and away you go. So under the dragon itself, luminous. Skull Crusher Brass was the main color I used for this dragon. Um, it's a really nice looking brass. It's a little softer than a gold. You know, brass is kind of a combination of gold and copper. <clears throat> it's actually zinc and copper, but you get the idea. It looks very gold-like, hence where we treat the, the wings. Now, some people, when they paint this, they do some vertigris, which is where you, you know, copper will oxidize and turn green. So will brass, it will, it will um, oxidize and turn green. So does bronze. But because I still have to paint a bronze dragon, and I already painted a copper dragon with a little bit of vertigris in there, I didn't want to do vertigris, vertigris, vertigris. So let's make this dragon pure brass, but let's add some red tint to it. Because if you look at the pictures in the Monsters Manual, he does have some red at the tips of his wings, and then either green or like a black near closer to his body. So my plan was to grease him up with this brass fully, his whole body, like a prime them, it would have been good. <clears throat> and then work them from there. Now underneath the green stuff, again, there was a seam there. That's called liquid green stuff. I don't record that. It's not very exciting. Just put some on your brush using an old junker brush and tuck it in the seam. Add a little bit of water to smooth it out. And when it's dry, it's filled that seam. And now when you paint, you can paint right over top of it. As long as it's not a transparent color or like a yellow, it'll just cover it like it was never there. And when it's all done, you, there's no more seam. So as much time as you take to do that, it's kind of an unthankful job. Just like what people will say, prep work is the least fun part of our hobby. But take your time. Make sure it's um, done properly. And once you paint it, it's gone. And you, no one will even know that it was ever there. <clears throat> so just finishing up with this uh, brass. As I said, it's going to be everywhere. I put that shit on everything. Other side now. Again, use a big brush. It's another thing, a tip. Again, this isn't a painting tip channel, but use when you can big brush to save you a lot of time. You don't always have to use the tiny miniature brushes that we use for these fine details. You should have a brush the size of your little finger for times like this when you just have to coat an entire wing with one color of paint. So instead of using that tiny little brush uh, with the small pencil head, use a big boy and get it done. And uh, use the little ones for when the details matter and you want to snipe some stuff. So we're almost through with this. And on to the next color. Next it is Rune Lord Brass. Okay, so another paint with brass in its name. This is a bit darker and I'm keeping it close to the body. Rune Lord Brass, it's going to give me my black kind of color nearest its body. <clears throat> um, and you can see the two tones there as they move its way up. Now it's important to do this step while they're wet. We're going to wet blend. We're going to Bob Ross wet blend this stuff together. So see the Rune Lord brass and, brass and there's that hard line split between them. So now we're moving over to this Spirit Stone Red. Now this is a pro tip and I just figured it out. People have liked the gradient shading on this, and, and so do I. Spirit Stone Red is a technical paint from Games Workshop. It's designed for doing gems. So you point, paint something Stormhost Silver and then put a layer of this on, and it looks like a ruby. So I figured, well, what happens if you paint it onto a brass color? Well, it looks like a red brass. 
Now both paints that bronze below, the Rune Lord bronze and the Spirit Stone are both wet. And where the hard line was, I'm painting over it with a wet Spirit Stone brush. So I'm keeping it nice and solid at the top <clears throat> with a thick application so it's nice and red at the tip. See? Tip, 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 tip. It's straight paint there. Straight paint. Right for my palette. Oh, I haven't even done the bottom on this side yet. Whoopsie. <laughs> so go back to the brass. And again, this is a good expl a good demonstration of how it's being done wet. Putting it on up to the halfway mark, right at the bottom down there. And then rinse your brush, brush. And while it's wet, start at the top. Bring down some hard paint on those edges. And when you get down to where the brass is, and the paint is mostly off of your brush, the Spirit Stone Red is mostly gone, then you can just dab it and have those two colors mix at this at the middle there. Bring up the brass, push down the red equally, and you're going to get a nice gradient effect when it's dried. Or nice again in the eye of the beholder. I like that. So, <clears throat> now we're on to the rest of this dragon's body with Brass Scorpion. The third brass paint, this is the most coppery of them. This is going to be for his frills, for his um, cheekbones, as you can see, up his spine. I'm trying to put him, oh yeah, I struggle here. I'm trying to put him on the clip. There he goes. <clears throat> so we're putting this brass scorpion. It's a dark brass, almost copper-like. I'm just going to put for some dimension so that everywhere else stays lighter and this is darker. All right, so we're putting his spine, back of his head, his, his eyebrows, his mouth with this darker brass color. Um, mm -hmm. Shoulders, tops of the shoulders. Again, not underneath, just the tops of the shoulder blades and his haunches, like his hips there, and probably up the front wing as well, <clears throat> but just a bit. And I'm gonna probably, th well, I'll thin the paint out with water the closer, the further away from the head I get so that it kind of trails off. It doesn't have a hard line edge. Finally, Reeklin Flesh Shade on the bottom scale. So I didn't do the Scorpion Brass on his bottom. So his bottom is the same color as his wings were before we painted them, which was just that original brass, that metallic brass paint from the very beginning. The Reeklin Flesh Shone just adds a, like a sort of reddy, orange tinge to it. <clears throat> this is a shade, so it'll dry and, and show through. It just it highlights all those individual scales underneath. And that was it. Let's glue him on our sandy base and take a look. So there's that painting I painted on the little fabric with the easel that I made of cardboard. And there's a finished milliput pillar and one of the two chests. On this side, we have the other open chest, and you can see the dragon. That spirit stone red dries somewhat glossy, so the light's reflected on it, but it's a beautiful red ruby color. The back uh, side here, again, we can't really see the painting anymore, but we do see the open chest with some of those diamonds and rubies glued into place. And another pillar. And from his back side, again, see the sand piles with the marble underneath, so it truly looks like a desert palace-looking place that maybe you want to hang out. And then the back side of the dragon. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions specifically to painting this guy, please feel free to comment them in the list in the links below, and I will answer them. Uh, some of the parts I didn't highlight in this video, for example, was the milliput rolling of the columns and stuff. It's just like pretty straightforward stuff. But if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, and I will gladly help you on your journey. Uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this. This is GMA Tank, and wash your hands, people. Bye bye.